It was 50 years ago today when thousands of screaming fans welcomed the Beatles to New York City <laughs> to kick off their first American tour. And two days later, the Fab Four, made up of John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr, first appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show and officially kicked off Beatlemania on this side of the pond. 50 years ago. Can you believe it? No, <laughs> I can't. Before that historic performance, the Beatles had to go through a dress rehearsal. As you could probably imagine, what you might not know is that George Harrison had a fever and he had to sit it out. And that led the way for one very lucky behind the scenes guy to get his 15 minutes of fame with the most famous boy band in history. I kind of knew that it was really, really different is, is when the request for tickets was over 50,000 people for, a, for a, an audience of 728. Like a half a block away, there were like 5,000 kids lined up and screaming, and you know. They actually had a police escort from the hotel uh, to the studio. Uh, during rehearsal on Saturday, uh, of course, George was not there. He was at the hotel with 102 temperature. So I happened to be in the control room I happened to be wearing a dark shirt, and I was asked to go and stand in for George. All of a sudden, I hear this laughter going on, and it's, uh, it's Ed Sullivan with a beetle wig on, and everyone's taking his pictures. And he says, you know, like, enough, of, enough is enough for himself. He takes off the wig and says, come, we have to make it real, and they plopped it on my head. When he put the wig on me, he expected maybe Paul and John and Ringo to go, like, be hysterical and the whole thing. It's like. Their reaction was like, yeah, okay, uh, let's start being a professional and let's, let's, let's get going on this thing. Uh, it really told me a lot about them. It, was, it told me they were really professional. I got to know them uh, backstage uh, only because I was, I was their contact. But uh, I'll always remember uh, 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 George wasn't feel, really feeling that well, so he was kind of isolated. Paul was hanging by himself with the guitar, if I remember right. Uh, Ringo seemed to be, you know, I think Ringo watched uh, black and white television and uh, of course John just kept on wandering back and forth, up and down because uh, he was fascinated. We had a Coke machine on the fourth, fifth floor. It was outside the dressing room of a call and Brill. And he kept on coming to me for, uh, for nickels so he can buy a Coca-Cola. How long do you think Beatlemania will last? As long as you all keep coming. <laughs> the question I always get is that what were they like? They were probably the, the four nicest people I've ever worked with. Not only nice, but professional. 50 years later is when I'm, I'm really realizing what it's all about. I really am. I mean, I'm, I am just, I am in a state of shock that I'm, you know, I'm gonna be 80 years old and I, I, you know, I actually have you know, people coming up to me at different places and wanting to meet me. I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm just this kid from Brooklyn. 50 years ago this weekend, and to commemorate the anniversary, you can watch a tribute, The Beatles, The Night That Changed America, a Grammy salute Sunday night at 8 o'clock right here on WBOC. So, do wow. you have a favorite Beatle memory? No, I don't know that I could narrow it down to one. There are so many. Yep. It's, how about you? Well, you, you, you can't narrow it down I to can't. one? I can't. Oh, okay. I, I mean, it, it fascinated me how the, the girls were all screaming at the fence at the airport, and I, it's just... There was so much. I think my, my biggest memory was how cute Paul McCartney was. I, I didn't understand how anybody thought the other ones were even as cute. But you were smitten by Paul. I was smitten by Paul. <laughs> and we're not the only ones who like to take a trip down memory lane. Joining us today to tell us a little bit more about Delmarva's biggest Beatles fan is WBOC's <laughs> Makia Turner. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Now, obviously, the Beatlemania and all that was before your time. Yeah. <laughs> but you have grown fond of the music by doing this story, haven't you? Oh, absolutely. And just to see the impact that they had on just so many people. In fact, that memory that you recall, Jimmy, actually is one that stands out to a lot of people, right? 4,000 people went to JF Kennedy uh, Airport to greet the Beatles. And of course, that was the beginning of the whole British invasion. And uh, I mean, they were just an awesome group. And I, I could tell after doing so much research on them. So mm -hmm. you talked to a lot of people here on Delmarva about their memories. What kind of what kind of stuff did you get back? Well, actually, this, uh, this uh, one guy, uh, Rick Gardner, um, 
amazing collection, his entire basement, a, a true treasure trove to, uh, to the Beatles. He's collected hundreds, hundreds of records and uh, just has so much memorabilia and uh, we're going to actually uh, hear what he remembers most about them when he tuned in that night to see them perform on the Ed Sullivan Show. One of the things I thought was so cool is where they go, the woo, and I just love that. And every time they did it while they performed on the Ed Sullivan Show, you would get this little chill running up your spine. <laughs> wow. And Beatles mania has even inspired others on Delmarva to actually give back. Oh, yeah, but I want everyone to tune into that story. You're not going to um, tell us right now, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you, but let's just say you're in for a real treat. Really? Tune in Sunday at 11. All right. Makia, thank you so much. We can't wait to see your story. Beatlemania turns 50 Sunday night on WBOC News at 11 after the Grammy salute. And from one memorable group to another. Yeah, we love when Alex and Shiloh take the stage in Historic Studio D, and we're going to get a full performance from them a little bit later on. But next, diamonds. There are so many shapes, cuts, even colors of the precious gems. Where do you start? We're going to learn how to pick out the perfect one for your sweetheart. But first, the Harlem Globetrotters are coming to town, and we want to give you tickets to the game. We're going to announce one winner every weekday starting this Monday and running through February 21st. Each winner will receive four tickets to the February 25th game at the Wicomico Youth and Civic Center. For your chance to win, go to DelmarvaLife.com, click on the show tab, then fill out the required fields under the contest link. Good luck, and we'll be right back. 